Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started here shortly. I just wanted to do a quick sound check just to make sure everybody could hear me okay. Can everybody just throw a hand up if you can, if you can hear me? I just want to make sure that my voice is coming across. Awesome. I see some of you guys throwing a hand up. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll get started in a couple of minutes here. Guys, I just want to do another quick sound check just to make sure everybody can hear me okay. If, if you guys don't mind throwing another hand up, if my voice is coming across okay, I just want to confirm. Awesome. I, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. We'll get going in a couple of minutes here.
Good morning and good afternoon to everybody. This is Unistream Cloud Solution Webinar. Now, before we get going here, I would like to encourage everybody to sign up for a free trial for UniCloud after this presentation. Uh, if anybody has any questions or concerns um, with, with features and uh, a, a, anything, anything to do with, with cloud for the most part, please feel free to, to, to reach out to me afterwards. I have a number of links, uh, for some documentation and, and demos for anybody who is excited to experience and take the cloud for a test drive. My name is John Anastasides. I am an application engineer with Unitronics. UniCloud is the complete no-code IIoT cloud platform for OEMs and machine builders. UniCloud provides the tools to display key information on user-defined dashboards, allowing customization for creating a tailored look and feel. Now, before we get too deep, I want to start with some terminology that will make today's experience a little bit easier to grasp. An asset type is the application at hand or the project that is running in the field. An asset is the actual machine that is tied to this project on the site. Now the PLC is going to be validated by a serial number that is on the white sticker on the hardware where the part number is located. Once the validation process has happened, this is going to allow remote access. And in some cases, a router or UCR model is needed in order to pass telemetry from asset to the cloud. The account is going to be tied to an organization. You will create a company name and be added to the organization as the machine builder. As this admin, you can then add channels and customers who have access to the different UniCloud utilities. UniCloud can be used to raise efficiency. Boost your bottom line using built-in data analysis tools, including collection of aggregated data to show in a graph or trend. Fast commissioning. Due to, due to the cloud being no code and hassle-free setup, it is very easy to get a controller to a point where it is field ready. UniCloud offers full control. Everything from remote access to organizational structure is available for the admin on the account. And go live in under 30 minutes. Within this time frame, you have a fully integrated IIoT solution. In this time frame, it is very easy to configure your machine, connect and test your PLC, lay out and build your dashboards and manage your organization within the account. As, as a machine builder, you have the ability to analyze KPIs, improve performance, increase revenue, create a predictive maintenance schedule, and give machine owners the ability to monitor and operate at your discretion. There is no code or previous cloud expertise required to work with UniCloud, and it truly does have it all. Built-in infrastructure, interfaces, and functionality that allow you to be the most efficient that you can be. I'd like to discuss some business benefits. Adding IIO capabilities to an application. 
This allows you to have key aspects of applications in the field at your fingertips, no matter where you are, so long as you can sign into your account. You can monitor and operate the panel as if you were standing in front of it in the field. For business intelligence, UniCloud allows you to understand production at each site and compare against others, ultimately allowing you to increase sales and reduce cost. And last but not least, you have the ability to extend the machine builder's reach. In one dashboard, you can view your entire fleet on a map or in a data table. And based on your selections, you can navigate to specific site information that is pertinent to the machine that you are curious about. Some of UniCloud's main features include data presentation. Create your exact vision with the tools provided. Data analytics allow you to collect aggregated data for site management, including production, and creating a maintenance schedule that allows everybody to be on the same page at all times. This will reduce downtime for people in the field as well as in the front office. Asset management tools allow for easy configuration and editing. You also have the ability to control your organization directly by adding, deleting, archiving or storing, locking and unlocking users, and these changes can be made immediately. This gives the admin the ability to structure their account or not only structure their account in a certain way, but also have the ability to make changes on the fly based on what is happening within the organization. You also have secure remote access available with the UniStream. Now, I just wanna make a note, web server and VNC are not available with our vision solution. Only UniStream supports web and VNC. VPN is the third form of remote access that is supported by all cloud capable controllers. Now, the web server feature is going to be tied into the actual web server that is configured and downloaded to the controller. VNC, I will, uh, we will explore this shortly. Uh, this has to be enabled at the controller level and also part of the certificate that is downloaded to the controller that will be part of the tunnel from cloud to asset in the field. VPN is a little bit different of an animal. What VPN is going to give you is a tunnel through your cloud account into the controller. This is going to allow you to connect with our software packages for remote access, but also downloading, uploading, and remote operating system updates. So these three features are very, very powerful and are included with your cloud account. Now the way this information is gonna be laid out on the cloud is through dashboards. These dashboards are fully customizable. There is no specific code needed. All of the widgets available for displaying different data or displaying data in different formats are drag and drop and sizable once dropped on the dashboard. When you are creating the properties for each widget or linking the properties for each widget, all of these selections are part of a drop-down menu, making configuration extremely simple. I'd also like to make note that these dashboards are multilingual. They support multiple languages. So anything that you see on this slide in English, you do have the ability to create a library for Spanish, French, and so on. Very important, all of the telemetry passing from controller to dashboard is completely secure. You do have to log into your account 
and a certificate must be loaded into the controller that is going to give you the full MQTT capabilities that is happening in the telemetry transmission. Now, architecture, you'll see here in the middle is your UniCloud account. I want to start with PLCs on the left-hand side. Now, the Vision, Samba, and Jazz are required to communicate to the cloud through a Unitronics router. And the reason for this is the means of passing data is with the protocol MQTT. Vision, Samba, and Jazz do not support native MQTT. The router is what is allowing that capability for transmission. So that is why a router is required in this case. For the Unistream, out of the box, you are cloud ready, excuse me, or cloud capable. You absolutely have the ability to introduce a router into your configuration, but it is not required. So long as the Unistream is on a network that has internet connection, you have the ability to communicate with your cloud account. If there are any issues at the cloud level, you are going to have a status that will update and show you what the current um, communication state is, whether it's connected or if there's a comm error and so on. So that will be an indication that your controller is offline. But very important, based on the controller you are using, a router may be required. With the Unistream specifically, it is not. It is only an optional feature. Now, you'll see here at the bottom, the machine builder then can log into their account and design, monitor, manage, and control their dashboards and assets that have been added to their account. User dashboards are created to allow remote access to show key data you can generate reports directly from the dashboard, and you can also create a predictive maintenance schedule that once again reduces downtime and make sure that everybody who has a hand in this asset running in the field is on the same page at all times. Introducing an industry first, the only PLC with a direct built-in cloud service out of the box with no monthly fee and no additional purchase of additional hardware or software. Introducing the Unistream C-Series. Now the Unistream C-Series is based off of the normal catalog numbers. Normally, in a Unistream part number, for example, a 15-inch panel, the part number would be a USP-156-B10. The cloud model is going to replace the B, as in boy, with C for cloud. Some of the features that are included with this hardware is a five, is, a, is, is an included plan for five years beginning on the date of connection. Now, out of the box, you have the ability to update 200,000 tags a month. There is no additional hardware required. There is no need to purchase an additional router, a Wi-Fi dongle, any sort of comm module. Everything is going to be included with this C-Model PLC. The only software package that you are necessarily going to be concerned with is Unilogic. You will see shortly that everything is everything configuration-wise is created within the software and then synced to your cloud account, which you are signing into directly in the software. Now, I just want to touch on uh, the UCR, which is the Unitronics router, which is an optional feature for the Unistream. 
what the UCR offers is your means of internet connection. So for example, if you have a site that is not necessarily easy to connect to the internet, the UCR can be added to a Unistream, which can give you internet connection over mobile with the SIM card and data plan, Wi-Fi, or a wire connection. Any of these three methods can be used to obtain communication with your cloud account. Just to take the routers one step further, uh, I can and I can distribute this information to, to anybody who needs it, but I'm, I'm just gonna cover it real quick. We have part numbers for you depending on where you are located throughout the world. In the US or North America specifically, we have Verizon and AT&T models. Now, these models are provider specific and it specifically pertains to if you are using mobile connection. So keep in mind that you are not limited to mobile connection. You do have Wi-Fi and wired available, but if you are using a SIM card, for example, a Verizon SIM card must be used with a Verizon router, and the same goes for AT&T. One additional note is currently Jazz PLCs are not supported with uh, a UCR, but they will be in the future, in the near future. So depending on if you want to go back and connect existing sites or new sites that use a Jazz to your cloud account, this will be available through the use of the Unitronics router. Right now, Vision and Samba controllers do have the ability be, to be connected to the cloud through your UCR in use. We are running a trial promotion that includes three months free for any subscription plan. And what this means, we are allowing you to stress test your application for three months with no charge. So you have the ability to truly test drive and experience what UniCloud has to offer. You have the ability to connect an unlimited number of PLCs. And this will allow you to get yourself to a point where you have a good grasp on what is ultimately needed for a subscription once your trial is coming to an end. Now, I would like to encourage everybody to sign up for a free trial. This will give you a good idea of the look and feel of the cloud site itself and give you the ability to, to test with demo units that we already have available for you and also the ability for you to connect your own hardware that you have in hand currently. So this is a very good feature for seeing what the cloud has to offer. I also want to note that there is free secure remote access until the end of 2022. This means that when you connect your controllers to your account, up until this time, you have the ability to use remote access like VNC, VPN, and web service without the need for a subscription. A subscription will be needed, however, starting in 2023, and also if you want to pass any sort of telemetry from the controller to your dashboards. So there is an asterisk, this is only for remote access. If you have controllers passing information to dashboards, there is a need for a subscription. And that is all I have for boring slides. What I would like to do now is jump into a fully built demo. Now, this is what the cloud has the ability to look like. What you see here is a demo of 11 connected controllers across the world. Where we are starting off is an overview page. Now, you will see on this overview page, we have our asset map, where if we zoom out, all of our assets are located on this map for us to select. We have the status of all of these controllers that are currently connected based on if there are 
communication issues, major alarms, or minor alarms. At quick glance, and a very powerful feature that the UniCloud has to offer is aggregated data that allows you to see totals over the last week, the last month, the last year of certain KPIs on certain sites. So for example, if you are curious about daily power consumption over the course of the last week, you have the, the ability to use a widget that shows a bar graph based on date versus your kilowatt hours. If this information is needed specifically, you have the ability to download this directly from the dashboard as a CSV or similar to a screenshot as a picture of this bar graph for later reference. You'll see here in the middle, I have an upcoming maintenance schedule based on my current working hours. Another one of the, another powerful feature that the cloud allows you to achieve is having the ability to understand when maintenance is needed without guessing based on certain metrics. So for example, if you know that if you're nearing 8,000 working hours, you know that at some point within the near future, you will have to have a tech on site. Anybody who has access to this dashboard can log in, see exactly where that site working hours is trending in the direction towards, and that tech can go on site accordingly. So there is no more guessing. You have the ability to have all of your techs and front office on the same page at all times. So for example, if I know my Alaska water treatment plant is, is the closest one nearing maintenance, I can jump directly into the pertinent data to this site and see exactly what metrics need to be monitored. So for example, based on my selection of Anchorage, Alaska, I can jump into a separate dashboard that now shows me site specifics in addition to what determines my need for maintenance. Now, let's say I'm not necessarily curious about a maintenance schedule, but more so pertinent data to the site or to an asset that is linked to my account. I have a California water supply located in LA. I see that my status is connected. If I select this site, I can jump to a secondary dashboard that now has all of my current data for me to view. You'll see that I have my asset located on a map, my status, my daily flow, my pump speeds. In addition to information like this, I also have graphs and trends that show me daily total power consumption over the course of the last week, daily water flow, all with the ability to download this data as a CSV file or a screenshot. I have a table with my raw data from my trends, and more so from a remote access standpoint, I have a VNC widget which literally allows me to operate this panel as if I am standing in front of it. So for example, with my widget, if I would like to view some of the system tag data in this controller, I can swap right from the running user app into uni apps and view what my current tags read specifically as if I am standing in front of the panel. Now, if you could see the screen of this HMI, everything that I am doing in this cloud dashboard widget is happening on the site. So this is a very powerful feature and serious remote access that you get and have the ability to either allow or not allow your users to take part in. So this has roles associated with it that the admin of the account has full control over.
you do not necessarily need to grant everybody this kind of access. In addition to your VNC connection, you also have web service available. Now, I'd like to take a second and just distinguish the difference between VNC, which is virtual network connection versus web server. Now, VNC is a mirror of the panel that you are connected to. So if a few of us are connected to this panel at the same time, every change that I make, all of the users connected will see this change made. So for example, a screen jump or a, or a jump into UniApps. Everybody is going to transition into UniApps once I transition into UniApps. The difference of the web server versus VNC, this is a very powerful feature that allows multiple users to be in a different place than other connected users. So for example, if you have three users connected looking at a web page, all three of these users can be in three different spots at a time. Now at the project level, in the Unilogic application specifically, you are generating or creating these web pages. You have the ability to convert all of your HMI pages to web pages or you can create your own. So you are not limited to a mirror like you are with VNC. So for example, if I have a widget here in the top left that allows me to see my connection state, my MQTT state, and so on, I click this widget. If there are other users looking at this dashboard, they are not necessarily seeing this pop up. So both features are excellent and can be used accordingly in different scenarios. Now, what I would like to do next is jump into UniLogic. After seeing what the potential cloud account or, or the dashboard layout can look like in a fully built example, now I would like to get into the nuts and bolts of how we can even get a controller, one connected and accessible on these dashboards. Before you can start using UniCloud, you must take the following actions. Now in Unilogic, you have to enable your project for UniCloud. This will require you to either sign up or sign in if you already have an account, you're then going to create an asset type and include any tags, alarms, or remote access you wish to grant capability for. You then are going to sync this asset type to your cloud account and then download the application to the PLC. So just for this example, I'm going to walk you through all these steps. I already have my project downloaded and connected just for the sake of time, but I will walk you through all of these steps specifically. In UniApps, you must activate the UniCloud feature in the PLC. Now, this can be done either with VNC or if you are standing at the face of the panel. I am going to show this over VNC through the cloud account. On the, de on the cloud device manager, you're then going to add an asset, load its certificate, and this is going to get you to a point where you are actually connected. And now in your cloud account, you have the ability to create your first and multiple dashboards beyond that to show the pertinent information coming from this Unistream controller that is connected. Now, first and foremost, what you must do in the project settings is assign your IP scheme. Now your IP settings are very, very important because this is what is gonna give you access to the internet and ultimately connectability from, or connectability to the cloud. Now the IP scheme that you see here is, my, is the network that I am currently connected on. My IP address is 192.168.14. That is acting as the panel's local area network address. The default gateway, is the router's IP that you're using to get internet connection. Right now it is 192.168.11. 1. 
Now, a portion of the IP scheme that is not always required in every application is the DNS server. And what this does is translates to, or it translates you to a machine level or machine friendly rather IP address that is going to make your internet connection possible. Now, 8.8.8.8 is Google's DNS. If you would like to confirm that you have connection to the internet, you can ping in UniApps this DNS and you should always be able to ping it. You should always get a green check mark. And that for the most part lets you know that your IP settings are configured appropriately, right? So this is where you are getting yourself to a point where you're ultimately going to have the internet connection needed. What is also necessary is in password management, you must enable VNC if you want this feature to be available. So VNC at the root is given or granted access via the application that is downloaded into the controller. So I'm sure that most of you are familiar with this menu. This is your password management menu where you have the ability to change the default setting of disabled, right? So VNC by default is disabled to enabled with no password or enabled with a strong password. So you choose the level of security that you would like to have on your VNC connection. For the sake of example, I have this enabled with no password. Now, this these two pieces of the application, this is more so legwork for your ultimate cloud connectivity. In order to actually configure UniCloud in the solution tree, you are gonna have a UniCloud option. Now, I already have this configured for my example. At this point right here, you would be choosing to configure UniCloud. The next thing you would be granted with is either a sign up pop up or a login pop up, right? So if you do not have an account, you can sign up directly in Unilogic or at unitronics.io. If you already have credentials, you can go ahead and enter them here. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to sign into your account through the software so that if you have connection, you can add asset types to your cloud account directly from the software. So just to bring this back full circle, this is what I mean by no additional software is needed. Everything is done directly in Unilogic. Now, I have already created an asset type called Unistream Cloud. Right now, you'll see that my status is draft. What you have the ability to do in Unilogic is choose what or what, what kind of telemetry you would like to ultimately pass. So you are adding tags at the, at, the piece, at the PLC level and alarms that are part of the project that can then be trans, uh, transmitted to the cloud and shown on your dashboards or in your device management portion. I'm going to start with showing the tag editor. In this menu here, you have the ability to add new tags and also choose the access level. By default, everything is set to read and write. At the end of this presentation, I am going to show what I mean by read and write. You now have the ability to push updates back to the controller. So if you want to set an access level for tags that you do not necessarily want to get overwritten from the dashboard, this is where you have the option to do so. And as you add tags, your usage count is going to go up. And this usage count determines what subscription you are ultimately going to need when your trial period ends. Now, as your asset type stays in draft mode, you have the ability to add or subtract tags or alarms as needed or determine if remote access is available. Once you publish this asset type, these 
parameters from the project are now set in stone. So it's very important to make sure that you keep your asset type in draft mode until you know that you are at a point where you want to publish it. Now alarms, alarms interface with UniCloud a little bit differently than just normal tag updates. So that is why you add alarms separately. So what you have to do is you have to first enable alarms for UniCloud. And then once they are enabled, you have the ability to select individual alarms or if you want entire groups to be accessed via the cloud dashboards. Now, I only have one configured, so I'm just going to go ahead and enable all of them. And last but not least, if you would like to enable remote access like VNC for your controller, you must check this box. This is what is going to be part of the certificate that when you load to the controller, it recognizes that remote access is available. And this just falls into, falls back in the line of uh, security. We want, we have designed this feature to be as secure as possible. So any feature that needs to be added to this asset must be part of the certificate so that the cloud account and the device is on the same page at all times. Now, I just want to make one additional note before I go back to some of the asset level features that you have. In your tag list, when you enable cloud for your project, you are going to have two structs created. In the cloud general struct, you are going to have three tags, one showing your MQTT connection state that can be referenced at the project level. You have your tag timer or your tag update interval, and then the ability to enable or disable cloud at the project level. So you do have application level features that are correlating to what is actually happening at the cloud level. So Unitronics is giving you the capability to create this type of application or addition to a current application in the field strictly by how you envision it. We are trying to give you all the tools needed to get yourself to a point where you have all of your bases covered. Now I'm going to go back to asset type here. And I would like to show some of the features that you have in your asset type tab once you are in the UniCloud portion of the Solution Explorer. You have the ability to create a new asset type. And if you remember, the asset type is the actual application that is going to be downloaded to the controller running in the field. So all you are doing is taking the current project and making it a cloud accessible asset type. The most important part of getting yourself to a point where the cloud can see the controller is syncing this asset type so it is now available when you log in. So this button here is going to sync your asset type to the cloud account. Now for the most part, this is all that needs to be taken care of at the project level unless you need to go back and make changes on maybe taking away remote access or adding or subtracting tags. Every change that you make, you just want to make sure that you sync your asset type once again. So what I'd like to do now is jump into a specific demo for a controller that I have next to me that is running the asset type that I just showed you in Unilogic. So we called this Unistream Cloud as an asset type. I am on my device management portion of my personal cloud account. The device management portion is going to show you all of your current assets, the status, and then certain cloud information like asset ID, what my current subscription is, when my end date for the subscription is, and so on. You'll see two tabs under asset management, assets and asset types. In the Asset Types tab, this is where I have the ability to make sure my sync was successful. 
you'll see that Unistream Cloud is here in my asset type list. And the tags that I had added are current value and tank level displaying in this menu here. So our sync was successful. Now you'll see on the right hand portion, the status of the asset type. Right now we are in draft mode. I have full capability to add, subtract tags and so on. And when I want to publish this asset type so that it is set in stone for the future, I can choose the publish button on the right. It's gonna ask if I'm sure. And once it's published, that is your definitive asset type and there is no capability beyond that to change anything. And that can be uh, a good thing or a bad thing, right? So you just wanna make sure that you are not in publish mode when you know that there still might be additions to the asset type. So it's very important to just keep that straight. I'm gonna go back to my assets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my asset that is currently connected and running the asset type that I just showed you. If I click on my asset, I have given it the name Unistream Cloud 1. When I click on this specifically, I can get pertinent details like the PLC serial number. This is the actual serial number that is on the part number tag on the hardware next to me. I have to validate this serial number when I am adding assets to my device management list. I then have general, which is going to give me data like who the owner is, which is the organization, the location of where this is, the asset type name, the PLC model, and the catalog number. Now, uh, I have had this question come up a couple of times. I just want to set this straight. If you have a cloud PLC, let's just say, for example, you have a 15-inch Unistream, or, well, well, I mean, I guess we can just use the, the US-5 that's connected, US-5-B5-TR22. The catalog number is always going to be the B number, but the model that you'll see is US-5-C5-TR22 that is going to let you know that this is, in fact, a cloud model, that has the five-year startup subs subscription. So if you are seeing on your account personally, if you have connected a cloud model, you might see two different part numbers. That is just because the catalog number is always going to be, or at least for the time being, the B5 part number. So I just wanted to, to clear up that confusion because I know I've seen that come up a couple of times. Now I can immediately view what my current values are for the tags that are being passed over MQTT. Right now I have a tank level that is inactive set to zero and a current value that in the controller next to me has been set to 30. That value has been passed and we will see it on my dashboard shortly. Last but not least is my subscription. I am currently in my evaluation phase, right? So I have the ability to stress test this at tag passing frequency of my choice. Once I get to a point where I need to assign a subscription, we have the assign button here, and it's gonna do the same thing as the assign button out here. This is gonna allow me to choose a subscription that I have purchased for my organization. So you are going to go through the process of purchasing the subscription, once it is added to our database, it will then be available to assign to an asset. Now, once you link a subscription, you are not committed to this subscription with this asset. If there is an issue in the field, let's just say the unit needs to be RMA'd, or you ultimately decide that you don't necessarily want to go with a US 5 B5, you might want to go with a US 5 B10 you have the ability to unlink the subscription for the asset and assign it to a new asset. So you are not locked into a subscription for a particular asset. This is a very nice feature that we are offering. So you, you do have the ability to unlink assets and relink them to Certain, subs uh, certain subscriptions based on if you might be demoing a certain piece of hardware for a customer and so on.
you'll see some options up here in the top right, like Get Telemetry. This allows you to do a manual refresh of data. You can re-download the certificate that is ultimately going to be linked to the controller. You can archive or store away this controller, and you can disconnect. Now, below that, you have the ability to initiate your remote access options, the same as your options out here. These are going to do the same thing. You have VPN, web, and VNC. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show my VNC connection. Now, this is the exact screen that is running on the controller next to me. Now, there are portions of this process that need to be done in UniApps. So what I want to do is I want to show where you need to navigate to get to UniCloud. In UniApps, if you go to Network, page over to UniCloud. This is where you are going to activate UniCloud and also load your certificate either logged into your account or manually with the USB stick. So that certificate option that I just showed you, since MQTT is an extremely secure protocol, the controller needs that certificate that you can download right from your cloud account or if you can log in through UniApps, you can do this directly once you have uh, your controller added to, to the account. So you have two methods of loading your certificate, either manually with the USB stick or by choosing this button that I'm ho hovering over, logging into your account and updating the certificate manually. Once you have connection, you can use this asset type to view your current statistics. So you'll see that right now I am connected. That correlates with my status here. I have my last transmission. You'll see, uh, I don't know if you caught it, but my subscription was set for one second to pass telemetry. I have my asset type and organization, my SD status, and my messages stored. In a, in a scenario where there is a communication issue, you will be storing these messages so that on your next connected state transmission, that data will be passed. You also have the ability to manually disable uh, data sending with this option here. Now I'm going to jump back out and I am going to show my user app. And you'll see that the current value is 30. And this is every second being transmitted to my dashboard and also, I mean, my cloud account as a whole, but specifically my dashboard. So what I would like to highlight next is a dashboard that I have created for this particular asset. Now on this dashboard, I have included a map of where this is located. Shouts out to Columbus, Ohio. I have a VNC widget that once I select the asset that I would like to have VNC connection to, it will load based on the asset ID that I am selecting in my map here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my connected device. And my widget is going to update, and I now have full control from this dashboard. Now, if let's just say, for example, if I wanted to do the same thing that I had just done previously from my device manager, I can do the same here. I can go into UniApps, and I am right back to where I was before. So this is a feature that allows read and write capability but based on the settings that you have determined at the project and the roles assigned to the user. Now, I, what I wanna do is show just a numeric widget, right? That is gonna update as my HMI updates. So you'll see that right now the current value matches. One of the newest features that we have included in our UniCloud solution is the ability to write back to the controller. So up until recently, this feature has been requested aggressively and is now available. 
And I just want to highlight what I mean by that just so everybody can see. So let's just say my current value right now is currently set to 50. I log into my cloud account from anywhere in the world so long as I have internet connection. I navigate to my dashboard. I change that value to 50. I choose update. You are going to be prompted with a message that is letting you know that this is going to be the new value that is in effect. So just to take this one step further into a real application, let's just say you are enabling this feature to change set points for PID. If this user changes the set point accidentally or on purpose to a value that is not necessarily good for the system, this value is going to take effect. Now, you have the ability to set a range in the properties, and there is also a disclaimer that Unitronics is not responsible for any mistakes made like this. So it is very, very important to just be mindful that this feature does work and will change the value. So you'll see that when I choose confirm, my new value of 50 has changed. So uh, you can see how this is a very powerful feature. You just want to be weary of who has access to this type of control. Now, just to take access one step further, and then I'm going to open it up for questions, I'm going to jump to my organization. And in my users list, right now I am the only user and I have admin roles. So that's why you saw me be able to do everything that I was just able to display in this demo. If I wanted to add a user, what I can do is I can invite them by email and then change or assign their roles, but always have the ability to change these roles on the fly. I can give them access to anything I would like them to be able to do or not do. So if I want to assign a gentleman as another admin, I have the ability to do so. If I wanted them to be able to just view devices, maybe just view organizational aspects and maybe a dashboard only remote access and not necessarily update access, I can assign these roles as needed. Now, after I save these and after this user is added, I can go in as the admin at any time and change these roles. So you as the machine builder or the admin on the account have the ability to play God, so to speak. You have the ability to change these on the fly in either the positive direction or the negative direction based on what needs to happen in the organization. Uh, what I'm going to do now is open it up for q and I appreciate the time, guys. Feel free to throw questions into the question box, and I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, I have a couple of questions here. Uh, I know that we're also running out of time, so I'm just going to make this disclaimer now. Uh, please, please, please sign up for a trial account. Uh, get, get the feel for what these features have to offer, and this is going to get you to a better point where you're going to have more questions, and myself and my team are always available to answer these questions. So feel free to reach out with any hurdles or questions that might come up. I'm going to uh, do my best to get through all of the ones that you guys have so nicely put in the question box now. Um, so a uh, question about if this requires connection to the internet. Yes, so this will require internet access. Now, there are uh, and I have seen examples of applications where let's just say you're on a relatively remote site. This is why I stress that the router is an optional feature in cases where you might not necessarily be close to Wi-Fi or near a wired connection. You can use the router with a SIM card in order to get your access, right? But that's now going to come down to choosing a data plan and so on. So you just want to be weary of the amount of tags that you're passing and so on. Okay, uh, is the standard Unistream PLC connectable to the cloud with a subscription or do you need a Unistream 
C model. So uh, the difference between the two, right? The C model and the normal Unistream model are going to give you the exact same application level capabilities. What the C versus the B means is if the subscription is already assigned to the hardware. So if you have a C model, you do not need to worry about a subscription for five years, right? That is built in, it is enabled once you are connected. If you purchase a new Unistream, or if you have X amount of Unistreams that are already in the field that you want to assign subscriptions to, this can be done as well. You would just purchase this subscription separately and you can buy them monthly, yearly, or by three and five years. So the max sample rate uh, for telemetry passing, uh, you are limited based on your subscription, right? You will see, however, in your testing that you can get it down to one second. So the trial really does allow you to stress test. Uh, great point. Uh, decimal point manipulation at the cloud level is now supported. So writing to the PLC and adjusting the decimal point location on the dashboard in the numeric widget is now supported. Uh, are there setup videos on how to for the UniCloud trial? Yes. Uh, anybody who has specific questions about that, feel free to shoot support an email and I can get you um, the links and documentation necessary. But uh, we do have a cloud-based website now that is going to have a getting started page and also pricing information. So uh, feel free, excuse me, feel free to navigate to that. That is going to have a lot of great information, but we are always here to answer questions specifically. Me personally, I am happy to um, do a remote session and uh, give you a more in-depth look at the sales demo that we have, a demo that I have, and if you wanted to just go over application or your account specific questions, we can definitely do that as well. Uh, can Vision Series PLCs be used with Unistream Cloud? So uh, Enhanced Vision Series, yes. Enhanced Vision, Samba, and soon to be Jazz. But it is, it's very important to note that you cannot just plug this controller into a local area network that might have internet connection and operate with the cloud. You must use or go through a router as the bridge because the the cloud is acting as an MQTT broker that we are publishing to and subscribing from, right? So what we need to do is make sure that there is a device in between that is MQTT capable and the router is specifically meant to do that with vision series units. Uh, okay. Guys, I got uh, one more, a couple more specific questions. Um, specifically on the V700 and its ability to communicate with UniCloud. So, uh, like I said, any enhanced vision and Samba unit can be connected through a router to the cloud, right? And it's the router that is going to give you the communication up to the cloud. Uh, to take this one step further, we now do support third-party PLC um, communication through our router or any any Modbus capable device really uh, through our router up to our cloud so that is what gives you the ability to add a jazz or a standard vision series controller or any third party like Panasonic Siemens uh, anything that supports Modbus as a slave configuration the router is going to communicate Modbus master to that device, pull its tag values, and send it via MQTT up to the cloud. I have a question about multiple admins uh, on an account. So you do have the ability to add admins, right? Once they are added as an admin, they do have full admin rights. 
um, if you wanted to limit that, my suggestion is you can add all the individual aspects of what that admin can do manually, right? So there's the admin selection, and then you have the ability to also choose individually what you want that admin to do. I would suggest that route in the scenario where you want a second admin that does not necessarily have the privileges that you as the primary admin would have. Uh, I want to just elaborate on um, draft versus published. When it comes to dashboards, uh, you have the capability to leave your dashboards in draft mode, but if you want to see the changes take effect throughout your navigation, you do have to publish them, right? Uh, this is not as serious as a publish because you can just drop it right back into draft mode if you wanted to make changes as the asset type. The asset type you must leave in draft mode because once you publish it, there is no way to get it back into draft mode. So that is what I mean by publish versus draft when it comes to dashboards and asset types. Question about downloading uh, to the controller through the cloud. So you have VPN capabilities from the dashboard into the router or uh the controller right so um what you ultimately want to have is the software open you're going to run that vpn utility it's going to give you an ip address to then connect uh, ip address and port in the case of vision uh and then once that vpn connection is secured you're using those credentials in visilogic to then make the connection through the cloud to the controller and you can then download so yes the answer is yes you can download through the cloud um, question on how the MQTT communication is made. Now, uh, MQTT is a very secure protocol. It is certificate based. So whenever you're adding a controller as an asset, one of the steps is to download that certificate and load it into either the router or the controller. Um, so that is how that is one of the big pieces of the MQTT connection. Once that certificate matches for both devices, uh, you in theory have flow at the either sample time or interval rate that you've selected based on the subscription, or if you're writing back to the controller, obviously that takes effect immediately. But it is the certificate that is a very important piece of that communication, and that's also what makes it secure. Uh, just to piggyback on that, if anybody wants to actually see the security statement that Unitronics has, shoot an email into the inbox and we can send that out to you. I, I know that I've gotten that request uh, recently. So if that's something that anybody is interested in, just let us know. Now, uh, question on routers. Now, uh, you have three specific routes that you can take, if you will, in order to get the internet connection or the WAN access to get your cloud access. It could be wired, it could be Wi-Fi, it can be mobile, right? So your mobile route, you're gonna need a SIM card from the manufacturer of the router that you decide to go with. So we have Verizon models, AT&T models. You will need to get an, a, an active AT&T SIM card from AT&T install it or insert it into that AT version of the UCR. And at that point, uh, you can go into the router configuration and you can set mobile as what, as um, the main WAN access, if you will. And then you can also determine if you want a failover, let's just say if you wanted to uh, switch over to a hardwired network connection in case mobile doesn't connect or if mobile drops off, you do have those options at the router level. Alrighty guys, I appreciate the time. Any additional questions, uh, feel free to shoot them into support. And I hope that everybody has a great day, great week, and uh, take UniCloud for a test drive. Keep in mind that you do have the ability to test this for three months once you connect an asset. So if you connect a controller, you have three months to see all of the features that UniCloud has to offer. Uh, and we do have a number of resources that will allow you to, um, including a help file that will allow you to navigate the cloud site a little bit better uh, and enjoy your experience a little bit more. But anything that comes up, 
uh, shoot us an email, give us a call, and we'd be happy to assist with any questions. Thank you.